Hi. Hi, Dr. Sharp. Oh, you can just call me Rachel. Okay. Awesome. That's so I'm I'm Jason Stokes. Nice to meet you. I'm Nick Larsh. Um, we're in we're in tenth grade at Holliston High School. Um, right now we're so we're doing a like project on I think I already filled you in a bit over email, but on like how we can meal prep efficiently for students and specifically student athletes. Cool. What class is this for? Like a health class or? Yeah, it's just wellness general class. wellness. Yeah, yeah. I didn't so, uh, know that when I was in high school. <laughs> Regular like health. Yeah. So uh, before we start, uh, do you mind just telling us a little bit about yourself, like how you got into this profession, what your interests were and all that? Yeah. So um, I was always sort of interested in just food in general. I loved like cooking and everything. I was an athlete too when I was in high school, a little bit, mostly just like back in cross country. Um, but I went to college at Westfield State first to study, um, what did I do first? What was it? Oh, athletic training or exercise science. That's what it is. I'm just talking to my fiance in the background. Um, exercise mm -hmm. science, but I took a nutrition course and we started learning a little bit more about like performance and just nutrition in general. And I loved it. So I transferred to Framingham State University, which you guys are from Holliston, right? Yeah. So Framingham State has one of like the biggest nutrition programs. Um, so I wanted to go there to get more directly into it rather than doing the exercise science. Um, and I just really loved it. Just nutrition plays such a role in like everything. Um, and dietitians can have a career in almost anything. Um, so yeah, I really liked it. Um, now to be a Jake, the pots and pans banging around, it's really crazy. Um, sorry. Um, now to be a dietitian, you actually have to have a master's degree. So after I was done um, at Framingham, I went to Simmons College in Boston um, and did more of like a wellness approach. And it was more about like nutrition for the public. Um, there was actually like a sports science um, like minor to it as well. So I did take some extra classes uh, in physical activity and nutrition too. So it's really cool. There's a lot you can do. That's it. That's a long journey. <laughs> no, it's a lot. Yeah. So you have to um, have your master's degree and do a supervised practice. Um, it's about 1500 hours. It takes like a year to do before you can sit and get your license. So yeah, it's a lot of work, but dietitians are the experts in nutrition, which is really cool to be able to say. Um, so it's fun. All right, Nick, do you want to ask the uh, first question or do you want me to? So yeah, we can just, uh, we have a few list of questions uh, for, for our project. Uh, the first being, how important is good nutrition for daily functionality? Yeah, incredibly important. Um, nutrition in general, all of, I know you guys said something in your question about like macronutrients, but you have your macronutrients and all your micronutrients, like your vitamins and minerals, and it plays a role in your entire function in your body. So without even something as simple as carbohydrates, you, you can't even function in proteins and fats too. So um, in almost every, every bodily system, nutrition is important, um, especially, you know, considering athletics, just regular muscle function, like smooth muscle function and nerve functioning, you need really, really good um, vitamins and minerals. And of course, all of your macros, like the proteins, carbs, and fats. All right, great. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see. All right. Um, are there any benefits that you like know or want to share of meal prepping? And if so, are there any ways that you think that kids can meal prep or kids going into high school and college can meal prep more efficiently? Yeah, that's a good question. I've been thinking about that. Um, you know, meal prepping and meal planning can definitely help make sure you are eating very nutritiously throughout the day and throughout the week. And it can kind of you know, satisfy your hunger enough and everything that you need um, throughout the day so that you don't kind of rely on junk food and snacking unnecessarily. Um, but for kids more your age, I mean, at this point, I would assume your parents are still, you know, making meals for you. Um, you have school lunches and everything. So, you know, the schools do try really, really hard to give you nutritious meals. So if you're going for like sort of their specials, that's great. I know there's still like the pizzas and I don't know, chicken patty sandwiches. I used to love those when I was your age. Um, yeah, so for you guys, as far as meal planning goes, I think it would be more important as like an entire family. So if nutrition is something that you're really interested in, especially for athletic performance, 
you know, talk to your parents, be like, Hey, let's go to the grocery store. I want to make sure that I have like good snacks before my practices, um, before my games, after the practices and games and whatnot. Um, because especially for you guys as athletes, you need to make sure that you have enough food to sustain you throughout whatever activity you're doing and then food afterwards to replenish everything that you've just burned through. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't even think about the, the family approach to that. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the easiest ways if you're wanting to lead like a healthier lifestyle, it's really hard to do alone. It's easier if you have your whole family in it, you know, together. So, um, but yeah, as far as meal planning goes, definitely helps to eliminate some of the bad like snacking and junk food eating, binge eating um, or whatever, but it's, it's more like a habit of preference, I suppose. I, I don't actually personally meal plan. I'll just think in advance what I'm interested in eating as far as like vegetables or protein for the week and play it by ear. Some people really love the structure of having like, you know, their chart Monday through Friday, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, but not everyone has to do it that way. It's more so just making sure you're eating nutritiously enough throughout the day. Awesome. Thank you. Um, another one we had was, uh, what are some good meals with healthy balances of micro or macronutrients that can be taken on the go? And like, you know, for people who play sports who don't really have a lot of time and like, you know, people who have practices right after school who sometimes wouldn't eat from lunch all the way until they get back from practice for dinner. So what do you, what do you think from uh, good balances on the go? Absolutely. So um, as far as snacks goes, we always think about food groups. So we have five major food groups um, and you want at least two to make a snack and at least three to make a meal. So you have, um, you know, vegetables, fruit, protein, dairy, and grains. Those are the five food groups. So say, for example, you're out of school, you have a practice in like an hour or two, and you need a little bit of a snack. You can have something as simple as like an apple with some peanut butter. That's a good combination of like a fruit and the peanut butter gives you a little bit of protein and a little bit of healthy fat too for some energy. Really simple and easy. Also, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is super underrated. I even use those now as an adult to bring to work or for a snack, honestly, because um, that bread, that grain is going to give you some fiber and fullness and that peanut butter, again, with like the proteins and the healthy fats are going to help keep you full, um, even if it's just for a couple of hours. So super underrated peanut butter and jelly sandwich is also awesome. Um, I was just talking with, you know, Jake before this and he's like, chocolate milk still is good too. You know, it's the milk is filling, you get some protein and the dairy in there it's not as good of a, of a snack as I would like to, to say, but um, definitely just thinking to food groups. So even like pretzels and peanut butter or, you know, carrots, ranch dressing, whatever you want. Um, but just having like a, a good balance like that between the carbohydrates and the protein. Um, and then for after the fact, when you exercise, you're depleting all of your energy stores. So, you know, we eat food and we burn a little bit for energy in the moment and then we store the rest of that away. When you exercise, your body uses up all of those stores. So as soon as you're done, you're gonna want like a protein and a carbohydrate source to replenish you. So if you have a practice and then you're going home for dinner, your parents are making chicken and vegetables, make sure you're eating both of those, the chicken and those veggies, you know, get that carbohydrate and that protein back <laughs> into your body. Yeah, uh, PB and J is so classic. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, super classic. Um, Kind of building on, on that question, do you recommend like three meals, like the classic three meals a day, maybe a couple like snacks, or do you think like, you know, four or five meals like balanced out is better? Yeah, each, each person is different. Um, I don't recommend going more than two hours without eating something. Um, if you're, if you know that it's going to be like four or five hours until your next meal, definitely have a snack in between. Your body does best when it has a little bit of energy given to you throughout the day. Um, so yeah, I if you know you're gonna go more than you know four hours without a meal, I would definitely have a snack. Everybody's different though. I always like to say honor your hunger. I personally get hungry like every two hours, but Jake, for example, he could go hours without eating and he's not hungry at all. So then at that point, what's the point of forcing it if you're not hungry? Um, but especially you guys are still growing. Um, a lot of you guys, you're still growing and you're doing athletics on top of that. You need a lot more than I do. Um, so I would not go more than two hours without eating. Even a little something, just a little snack. Thank you. Uh, are there any foods that you uh, recommend that young athletes or even students should stay away from? Like, 
foods that a lot of people normally eat and maybe even think that are, are good for you, but are, are you sure that, are there anything that you think that would, we should stay away from? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, when I was your age and I had, you know, practices after school, sometimes I was hanging out at school for like two hours before I got to, you know, do whatever I needed. And my mom would drop off like McDonald's or KFC or just like anything small to get me through that time. Those foods aren't really very nutritious. I mean, they taste good and they're filling in the moment, but they're not really that great for you. They usually have a lot of trans fats to them, which is like a more of a man-made fat. It's not even found naturally in any kind of food. Um, that's definitely not, not that good for us. Um, and then too, like depending on what your school has in your vending machines, I know like, you know, something simple like Cheetos or whatever would be really, really good. But again, it doesn't really have a good balance of nutrients that's gonna give you guys what you need for like good performance and energy. Um, so I would try and stick with more of like the whole foods approach as far as snacks. Like I mentioned the apples, even like dried fruits or some granola bars are really good. Um, and then another thing I was thinking about too, a lot of sports beverages, um, they can be loaded with extra sugar. Um, those are really good to use if you know you're going to be, say like, you guys play hockey, right? Was it hockey you said? Yeah, I play hockey. Yeah, you play hockey. So how long does the game usually last? Around an hour and a half, two hours probably. So at that point, at the end of the two hours, you probably sweat enough that you, you could use that like Gatorade or something to replenish all the electrolytes lost during sweating. Um, but for the average person like me that just went for a walk or something, I did not lose enough of electrolytes to like need that sports beverage to replenish it. So at that point, it's kind of just like extra calories and sugar that I probably didn't need. Um, so I find a lot of people love to just drink Gatorade like normally, like instead of water, but water again is also very underrated. Like just regular water for hydration is totally perfect um, until you reach that level where you've been active long enough that you do need like that replenishment from like something like a Gatorade. So yeah, I don't know if that answered your question or not. But. Oh yeah, that was great. You got my, right, thank uh, you for my that. jug right here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you right. need that water. All right, uh, one more general, it's kind of like a general broad question and then I think we can uh, wrap it up. Um, is there any like general advice that you give to like a young student like trying to improve their diet? Yeah, I mean, number one would just be eat. Um, I don't know if you guys were like me when I was that age, I hated eating breakfast. I just wasn't hungry, I wasn't into it. I would always skip breakfast, eat something crappy for lunch and then Oh my God, I could come home and eat like ramen noodles every day as a snack after school. Um, but those foods aren't very nutritious at all. They're just kind of loaded with calories and not very many nutrients. So I would just keep in mind choosing foods that are nutritious, eating breakfast. I know it's also very cliche, but you kind of need a good breakfast to set yourself up for the day. Um, helps improve focus, you know, during school and, you know, keeps your energy levels up. Um, definitely eat breakfast. And then yeah, just like, don't be afraid to eat fruits and vegetables. I know it's like not fun to have carrots for a snack or something, but just any way that you can kind of get some extra, you know, fruits and veggies in your day, those, you know, varieties of foods give you all the micronutrients that you need. So more so than just the macros, the carbs, the protein, you need a variety of healthful foods to give your body everything it needs. So don't be afraid to try new things and, you know, kind of branch out.